Are you looking for love? Are you a strength coach that's looking for love? Well, guess what we have in store for you? You're you're in luck today because we got Coach JT who's going to help you find your way to your soulmate. JT, I'll just let you let you take away from finding here. your way out right in the <laughs> next day. <laughs> in and out. Not talking about uh, the burgers. Not talking about the burgers. I'm talking about your love life. <laughs> <laughs> JT, how is it going, man? It's going. It's Friday right now. I don't know whenever people are watching this, but it's it's Friday. It's gonna be a fly day. It's it's always Friday on push and performance. It's always Friday. Unless you're listening on a Monday or like any other day of the week. But but really it's it's always Friday on push and pee. Friday's the energy. Yeah. That's it. That's what we're trying to be. That's it. You might be listening on a Monday. Hopefully it's feeling like a Friday. I'm good, bro. I think this is is this the first episode that I'm one married to no mustache. It might be. Just a, a big man. change. Just a new guy. So hopefully maybe more insightful, maybe better information, maybe more well spoken. I don't know. Probably none of those things though. But hopefully. We could only be like Phil so much. I mean, <laughs> man, you just pushing everything, bro. I believe it. Oh my God. But what do we have on today's episode? Trying to, I was trying to come up with a new name, but Amma is not fun. It's not like, fun. I wrote in our show notes that only we see. Instead of ask me anything, I wrote ask your boys anything. Um, we need to find somebody, please help us. We've been begging for episodes now at this point. We've been begging on social media. Somebody, please. Help us come up with a name for Please. the question and answer segment or a question and answer episode of our show. We're in need. What about pulling cues? Pulling questions. <laughs> he gave that Riz face. Pull. I think that might be it. Question performance and we're pulling questions, bro. All right. Hold on. Let me, let me just, let me just, let me just see how this feels on today's episode. We got a full episode pulling cues. That kind of felt right. <laughs> we might have just done it. Uh, JT, what do we have on the show today? On pushing performance, we are pulling cues. Oh. What does that mean? Hey, pulling questions, a full show answering your questions from IG. You could also email into if you wanted to, pushingperformance at gmail.com. Uh, but answering all of your questions, a little AMA style. So maybe it's training related. Maybe it's about JT's hair. Maybe it's coaching related. Anything in related to us or human performance, we're going to take them all down on today's show. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for this one. Don't ask me about my hair, please, though. So. There's not much, not much JT, going the, on there. The people want to know. The people want to know how does that stuff stay so silky? Man, unless you're... Pantene or Dove trying to hit me up for a, you know, sponsorship. I don't really know what else to tell you. Just we got to talk hair, about. We got to talk about your hair care because you, you can't be putting Pantene in that. But well, that's that's a top. That's a topic for another. It's an all in that's, one. That's insane. We got to talk about that. that's a problem. That's a topic for another discussion though. Put it aside. We'll put it aside. You put that one to the side. I'm not gonna be sitting here with a Pantene sponsorship. No, 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 no. We'll talk about hair care. But let's just get right into it. So pulling questions from Instagram, first one. I'm interested to see where you go with this. I don't know if I've Me ever too. been asked this, or I don't know if I've ever been asked this. I don't know if I've ever really talked about this with the coach, but do I need to count reps, or should I continue spacing out and telling stories while my clients do their reps? In general, I think some people are fine with me telling stories and estimating the reps. Some people get mad. I need more opinions. So, JT, what is your opinion on counting reps? This is a fun question. I think it's a fun question because I know a lot of coaches um, have this thought in their head, like counting reps. You know, should I do it? When should I do it? Should I not do it? Um, 
my first thought is uh a lot of reps don't really matter you know and yeah. when i say that it's a uh, more of our accessory work you know if we're doing bicep curls bicep crunches stuff at the end where you know we just want volume um i don't think we're going to count or we don't need to really count those reps for them um and two they don't really matter at the end of the day if you look at the grand scheme of things right mm -hmm. um when we're looking at maybe bigger lifts like your your squats your 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 benches the things that you're measuring um over time and then trying to understand if there's a uh, progressive overload needed there i think mm -hmm. we can be a little nice and then count those reps for them just because you know it it, it does take a little bit of a uh, extra mental capacity to do so so i think counting reps is a time and place and you know time and place would be when reps matter right yeah. um, and i think another thought in that question i do like the thought of storytelling i know a lot of coaches um like my, including myself need to improve on their ability to you know storytell and then have that conversation with their clients because it does yeah. build that relationship right but now it's just an understanding of when to do so um and it, i don't know my opinion you shouldn't be talking about your own stories for the whole session because it's their session maybe yeah. asking more questions and have them tell a story so uh, i think that's more of like again the, that building relationship art of coaching um type of subject where you know tell more stories care less about reps um and then the, there's a time and place to do so. But uh, curious to hear your thoughts there. Yeah, man. No, I think I love, I love that answer. I like the call of, of, of the, the storytelling aspect of the question. But I think, yeah, for me, like like you said, there's a time and place, at least when I'm thinking about it, where it makes sense. But like first and foremost, I love this question because I feel like we as coaches get so caught up like in the minutia right where i'm thinking of like what's happening on a physiological level what's happening at the intramuscular level when someone's squatting when in reality like this is the shit that our members are thinking about <laughs> like this is the shit that our clients probably think about way more than you know the the what's happening internally and the things that we're thinking about so I, it's, it's funny like i don't think i've a coach has ever you know asked me this or i've really ever talked about it with a coach before but it's kind of similar to what you said like i think i think um there are uh, there's a couple times and places where it really makes sense. The one for me it really sticks out is like any time that the focus is purely on output to the point where like you know they really shouldn't be thinking about counting. They shouldn't be thinking about laundry. They shouldn't be thinking about what they're going to do after this. Right? They're thinking about the next rep. Right? And that's like few and far between in our training. So like looking at a like a plus set or a max rep set. Right? So like hey, you got eighty percent of your max rep back squat or your 80% of your one around back squat on the bar. Let's get as many reps as we can. Don't worry. I'm account for you. I just want you to focus on, you know, your bracing, your body position, driving out of the hole, like whatever it is you want them to focus on and then getting another rep and listening to your body. Right. So now the cognitive load, the cognitive demand is lower just by a little bit, right. They can focus on performance. And then now these reps start to matter a little bit more at the end of the day, they, they still might not, you know, really matter too much but like let's say you know hey i think i got eight but really you got 11 right and if you get 10 or more we're adding weight next week so like it starts to matter from an overload standpoint a little bit again in the grand scheme it might not but i think in situations like that is where it really starts to make sense where we're trying to reduce the cognitive demand or like hey i'm learning a new movement in that case i wouldn't even prescribe reps like maybe we can do an ISO hold or maybe we can do just like 20 seconds of reps. So let's just practice the movement. I want you to just think about how it feels and, and not think about counting. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've worked with clients in the past who were like, I need you to count everything for me. And I'm like, personally, like I, like, I don't like doing that. Like, I don't want to feel like I'm your handler. Like I, I want this to feel like more of a relationship, right? Like we're building towards something. So yeah. like any more, and this might sound mean, but like if, if a client is like, hey, I need you to count every single rep for me, I'm like, you, then I'm, you know, we might not work well together, right? Like you might not be the client for me. Yeah. 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 Uh, I like that answer. I think it's uh, knowing your worth, King. That's a, that's a good <laughs> way to, to really put that, right? I'm not a counter. Like I, I tell people, I went into this business because I can't really count past 10, man. Algebra is not, you know, <laughs> 
my forte so i was like what, what can uh, i do to make sure i'm not good at all this math stuff and actually i tell people off the bat like i'm sorry i'm not a counter um you know so counting your head while i look at your technique and most of them are like all right uh, yeah i appreciate that <laughs> yeah right, like so. i'm trying to i'm trying to coach not count yeah yeah exactly so <laughs> oh I'm, I'm curious to hear everybody else's thoughts on that too i think yeah. sometimes too as a young coach i used to count reps to fill the space because i didn't i didn't know what else to say or do and i'm yeah, like yeah right, yep five six <laughs> kind of seven spacing. good yep eight <laughs> yep there it is keep going yeah so i mean it, it it is an interesting thought i think uh at the end of the day a lot of reps don't matter yeah. um what do you value as a coach you know know your worth king queen and <laughs> do your thing right I love that. All right. Ready for the next one? Let's get it. All right. Any impactful coaches we've had as young athletes? What you got? Who you got? This is interesting one, especially for me. I, no, <laughs> at least not in a positive <laughs> sense. Oh. Um, I, I, I think back to like, when I thought about this question, when I first saw this question, I was originally like, well, shit, nothing. No, let's keep it pushing. But then like thinking through it more deeply, like why I became a coach in the first place. And one of the reasons is because like, I want to be the coach that I didn't have mm. for other people. Right. So thinking about like basketball, especially like when I was coming up playing basketball, like coach Carter had just come out recently. So every coach wanted to be coach Carter and they had like the, 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 the kind of aggro angry coach piece without the empathy and relationship building piece. I think they missed mm -hmm. that part of the movie where the coach cared about his athletes. So it was just like, I'm going to run you till you throw up. I'm going to scream at you like not constructive. And you know me, I'm sensitive. So I did not do well with that. Uh, and then my tennis coaches didn't actually coach me. They were just kind of like babysitters. So like, and I'm, so I mostly taught myself how to play. And when I say play, I mean, played not that well. Um, and it wasn't really until like, I got into my career and you know, had weightlifting coaches and mentors and, and people like that who I now still look up to and learn a lot from. But yeah, I think like that was really formative for me or is like, you know, hold up, you know, there, I know there are good coaches out there. You know, I'm going to try to be that for other people. Now, granted, it's not sport coaching. Like I've never done any sport coaching, but even with strength and conditioning, I try to have that same impact. That's kind of the mindset that I bring into, you know, working with new people like, hey, I know this is you know, especially working with adults or youth athletes, like, I know this can be intimidating. I know this can be weird. I know this can be kind of scary, but like, I want to make this comfortable. I want to create a good environment for you. I want to build a real relationship with you. I want to, I want to help you get better. I want to help you find belief in yourself. Like mm -hmm. all that stuff that I feel like my coaches didn't really do for me. That's now what I've taken and the mindset that I approach, you know, mm -hmm. my own coaching with right now. I love that. I love went that. Deep, I think there's a lot deep of, on it. Man, so deep. I, there's a lot of parallels that I think that people subconsciously uh, do and consciously mm. do, um, you know, whether it be from an athlete to a coach or a, a kid to a parent, a, a, you know, an employee to a boss, you know, you start to turn into the, the person that you wish you had almost. Yeah. Um, and on the other side, if you haven't came any, or if there wasn't anything positive from that, you just kind of end up the way you were taught right so yeah i think there's two ways to that um but going back as a with a coach no <laughs> actually no let me i won't answer that too quickly uh yes and no i think no similar to you yeah there's a lot of coaches you know uh, that i've had playing playing tennis and then um i've worked with you know in basketball and like you just kind of see things that you you think is normal as a coach just yelling at you just doing everything to to run the athletes to the floor and <clears throat> you know once you see a good coach or a good way to uh coach somebody you start to see the contrast of that right mm -hmm. and i think of my instructors in taekwondo uh you know we were i was a kid 13 to i don't know 17 there was a lot of you know in martial arts it's a little bit different there's a lot of mental uh, yeah. strengthening that that is needed um, so i from what i recall there's there's some instructors there that that really helped shape the way i can 
strengthen my my mental capacity if you will like mm. there's there's a lot of times where there was i was going through it right but i remember uh, whatever drill i'm trying to re remember the drill but whatever drill we were going through it was it was like torture yeah right i don't know put, doing the splits almost and um i remember that coach just giving me positive you know coaching throughout that mm. moment and that's kind of where i what i think about when um what has impacted me as a coach, those moments where, you know, you're in front of somebody, they're going through it, but can you still guide them through in a positive way to, to come out of it as opposed to like, you know, that, that angro, is that what you said? That angro coach just telling you to do stuff and, you know, you don't always see that, um, that positive lens from in those moments unless yeah. uh, you actually feel it. Right. Yeah. And, I, and that makes you think about like, you know, what we do sometimes might not seem super impactful, but like it is, mm -hmm. or at least very least it can be like, you know, how we interact with someone can stick with them for a while, yeah. like for a long time. Like we, it could be, you know, what we do again, like not, not being sport coaches, but like at any level, whether you're working with a, a youth athlete, whether you're working with someone who's 50, 60 years old, like yeah. you're forming their views <laughs> of the gym and of, of movement, yeah. you're to some degree, like helping form their views of themselves yeah, and what they're capable of. Right. So like, like, don't, don't take that stuff for granted. Right. 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 Especially as a coach, like we, as a coach and we have that responsibility and that power yeah. almost to, to help change yeah. and impact somebody's life, you know, hopefully not for the worst, but if we can always remember that we're, we need to do this for the better. And, when you mention like whatever people say, we mm -hmm. we people remember right, and I I remember back, bro. I was, it's was 2019. I still can hang on to it in the back of my head. Like I was at the gym, and the a, a client, you know, walking through, he just said, "Bro, you're looking big, right?" I was like, "Thank you." <laughs> Till this day, I'm, I'm thinking about that, man. I, you know, so <laughs> still riding high. I'm still riding high. 2019 was, that was years ago. So you know, that just shows how much words matter and, and mm -hmm. how long they can actually um, carry over, you know, and yeah. I'm sure we compliment people every day on, on things and hopefully that, you know, creates that, that impact. Yeah. Hey, pushing positivity. Pushing positivity. As young thugs lawyers would say. <laughs> Shout out. Um, all right, let's keep it moving. Uh, number three. In that number same vein. Three. In that same vein, what do we like hmm. slash dislike in a coach? Uh, and I'm I'm taking this as what do we like slash dislike in a coach that would now coach us, mm -hmm. probably in something like training related. Yeah. For me, I'm thinking about. Let's start with a dislike. Okay. I think if uh, which actually can carry over to the like too but if if they don't call me by my name i'm not gonna like it right if they don't um care about what i'm doing mm. in the weekend i don't like it right so yeah. I'll, it really matters about do they care about me so i think that's what i don't like in a coach which will also play into what i do like in a coach um and uh humor is important Right. Mm. Um, if if there's no light humor or or you know if they just take themselves too seriously, yeah, and that's not my style. Maybe people do mm -hmm. like that, gravitate to that, but uh, I don't really care about that too much. If you take yourself too seriously, so <laughs> there's that balance that's needed. Um, but yeah, top of my head, that's really the ones that that come through and i think a quote to really sum that up is uh what are, what's the golden rule treat people like you want to be like they like you want to be treated right yeah, yeah 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 so i i like i don't know whoever said it uh reframed it but they said treat people like how they want to be treated so i think mm. that's something that that i try to keep in mind as a coach um because how you want to be treated might be very different <laughs> Yeah. Uh, to to others, so I think understanding how people want to be treated, um, and and 
understanding so and treating them like that is something that I keep in mind hoping a coach would feel the same. So Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm with that. I feel that. <laughs> Write that down, people. But yeah, I think for, for me go everything everything goes back to autonomy mm-hmm. for me, right? Like and when I work with coaches more recently, uh, uh oftentimes I'm working with a coach to get out of my own head. Mm-hmm. and get away from my own personal biases, which I think is one of the reasons why coaches definitely need coaches, right? Yeah. Because, you know, we got we have our own biases. We have our own likes and dislikes. And back to, you know, we talk about uh, whenever we release the periodization episode, talking about like path dependence. Like if mm-hmm. you run a program one way, you're going to probably keep writing a similar program again and again and again. Like it's not going to, in reality, like, yeah, we think we're varying things, but it's not going to get that different versus mm-hmm. if you have someone else fully come in who you've never worked with before writing your program they have their own right. biases it's going to look totally different it's going to feel totally different right so it's going to expose mm-hmm. you to different things so that's that's one of the main reasons why i work with a coach right? to, to learn more to be exposed to more to, to keep an open mind to learn but even with that said i i still want to feel like i have a seat at the table or, or mm-hmm. at least feel like I'm a part of the programming conversation, right? So um, whether that's like, you know, feeling like I'm being heard or, or feeling like I'm being understood. So like a lot of our goals can be ambiguous, right? Like, so I'm, I'm saying like, hey, I want to get faster or hey, I want to get stronger. Like, cool, in what lifts, for what, for why? Like, let's try to unpack and understand. And like, as we're going throughout the training process, I, I hate when it's like, all right, here's the training for the month. Like, get after it and I'll get with you in a month and see how it goes i'm like no i want to like be able to kind of communicate at least a little bit and say like hey this exercise doesn't make sense here or like hey did you am i supposed to feel absolutely slammed (laughs) after this day like you know what did you expect what are you thinking and that way we can kind of iterate together Mm -hmm. along the way because one in one regard i feel like that helps them create a better program and then two that helps me learn a ton right right which is ultimately like when i'm working with a coach at this point now it's like it's um, yes, I'm obviously trying to, you know, get a training effect and like get better, but like I'm trying mm-hmm. to also learn as much as I can from the person that I'm that I'm working with. Yeah, it builds trust, right? Just just yeah. having a seat at the table. I like that, and I think that's something that you know I try to keep in mind with my clients too. Is yeah, I'm a coach. Yeah, I probably know more science than than you do. Um, probably not much more, but you know. <laughs> I know enough to, to create a program, but at the end of the day, you don't know what they're going through. Um, you don't know every day, you know, you don't know yeah. unless you talk to them every day. But if, if you know, if it, there's not a consistent um, method of com- communication there, you have to understand how to, um, you know, adjust to what needed. And I like that a lot with just building autonomy or having yeah. autonomy, the coach. Yeah. And I guess it's more, I guess it's more virtual. Um, if I'm going in person, honestly, I just want to if if it's in person I I just need the environment to be a place that I want to be in yeah and like you right. to be a, like the coach to be a person I want to be around it's so mm-hmm. like somewhat similar to the stuff that you were saying but like if I'm not like excited to go there and granted there's gonna be like you know a morning where I'm you know waking up early and I feel like shit and I don't want to train like whatever that's gonna happen but like a majority of the time I gotta be pretty pumped to, to go there I gotta when I'm in there I want to be having a good time like again mm-hmm. like back to what you said about people taking their program too seriously and taking their training too seriously like. I there's a time and a place for it. Like even at, I was at the gym this morning and there's a group of guys who I don't know if they actually step on stage They're I mean, they, they, they look good. They're pretty jacked up. They look good. They train hard. They're pretty jacked they look up. Good. You look good. But like <laughs> we're, we're in there blasting, you know, like man of steel theme and Jurassic park theme and like screaming and like going to, I'm like, Oh, let's, 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 let's pull it back. Let's just, yeah. let's just, let's pull this is not the come on let's just let's just turn it down a notch here you're doing a little too much for your for that. your for your tricep extensions here let's just let's just let's just <laughs> try to burn it out let's bro. Pull, trying to burn let's it pull, out let's pull back man you don't you don't need to be slapping buddy's tricep he's got it <laughs> he's gonna be okay let's just chill out let him be let him be <laughs> that's not making anything grow let's just <laughs> you're scaring everybody let's just stop <laughs> You look good. All right. I love that. I love that. Uh, ready for the last one? Let's get it. Last one. I think this one's going to be a good one. Um, really, 
curious to hear your thoughts on this, bro. Um, what are your thoughts on how to motivate yourself? Um, and if it's any different, how to motivate your clients? Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll start. Let's start with motivating ourselves. I think this is something that probably isn't talked about enough as coaches uh, or among coaches, mm. um, which is cool. I'm glad, you know, that we're, we're tackling this right now, but like, it's, it's a funny paradox to some extent, right? Where it's like, we're in a gym. People are like, oh, you're in a gym all the time. People think I work out for a living, which I don't understand that. Like, what the hell? What are you, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. that doesn't make, that doesn't make sense. But regardless, so we're in a gym all day. Mm -hmm. I don't want to stay in the gym and work out. Like, I want to get the hell out of there and go home. <laughs> like, I don't want to go to the gym before I have to be in the gym all day. Like, I want to yeah. get the hell out of there and go home, right? And, like, mm -hmm. I think motivation for us can be, for coaches, when I say us, like, can be actually really challenging to mm. stay in it, to stay motivated, right? So, yeah. for me, the thing that keeps me motivated the most um is just doing things that I enjoy in that moment. And within that, typically those things look like trying to learn something new, trying mm. to master a movement, right? Trying a different training style for a little bit. Like, and yes, sometimes it might look like program hopping. Sometimes it might end up actually being too much variation and variability where i'm not progressing as far as much as i could mm -hmm. but i think in my opinion in the long run it keeps me training and it keeps me training hard so like when you look back on a year i've still made a fair amount of progress and like i don't really do a lot like a ton of like direct hypertrophy work and i, I will go through phases where i bias strength more so and bias sprinting and things like that more so but like, like even right now like I've taken out a lot of upper body stuff, like a lot of upper body strength, basically all of my upper body volume, like accessory stuff. And I'm just doing more like gymnastics type stuff. So I'm doing more crawling. I'm walking on my hands. I'm, I'm you know, doing hand balancing things. I'm doing like planche progressions, right? I'm yeah, doing yeah. Like front lever progressions, like things like that. Like, cause that's fun uh, in place of doing a bunch of lap pull downs. And I know it's not a one for one swap, but for me, that that's for, that's the thing that, that keeps, me motivated like i could never do a program that's like squat bench dead all year <laughs> like i would need to have more unless i was like had awesome training partners and like right you know, whatever that was my like main goal but like i know for me at this point in my kind of life cycle in the gym it's like yeah i want to get better but that's not the end i'll be all like i also want to have fun and and genuinely enjoy what i'm doing yeah okay I like that. So doing things that you enjoy, yeah, but also progressing. Um, what's your approach with motivating clients? So with motivating clients, I, I, it's funny. I think back to a few coaches I've worked with back in the day who would always say like, "Hey, you know," kind of both sides where it's like a weird false dichotomy. It's like we're not here. I'm not a cheerleader. Like I'm here to coach you, or like. You know, let's be the best part of our members' day. And, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it feels like that weird, like, why can't we do both? Like, why can't we <laughs> yeah, do both yeah, of yeah. those things? Um, so for me, again, it goes a little bit back to environment mm -hmm. and, like, the space that they walk into. You, you mentioned saying someone's name. Like, I want you to feel like this is about you. If we're in a group, I want you to feel like we have a moment with you. Like, and, and creating that environment and over delivering on the value yeah right i want to give i want to give as much uh, more than i think i should and then probably give a little bit more to each individual in the group that i'm working with mm -hmm. um especially like thinking back to like you know back to the, for the question before like because i've been in environments where it's not like that and it sucks mm -hmm. right so like how can we how can we fall to this environment that is like yeah. inherently motivating for right. the people in there and it's fun it's fun mm -hmm. to be around it's a place, it's a place yeah. we want to be but okay i like that to you what are you what are you thinking for motivation for yourself how do you stay motivated i'm still i'm still thinking about that gymnastics thing you're talking about bro i might want to get some 
Must Iron want to do a Cross. Cartwheel. I know. <laughs> I don't know if I could do one right now, but we'll, we'll talk so about if that. If you later. if you try to do an Iron Cross, your shoulders would be gone from your body so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be shaking. But if you get that, uh, I'm gonna be pledging allegiance to that Bill pla- flagpole pretty soon. I'm I'm sure, right? I'm all I'm all lower body. My upper body is so small that like there's no. I maybe I could do it with my feet, hang on my feet, and have my upper body <laughs> hanging. <laughs> That's the we'll only hope about, I got. We'll talk about a flag like pole a monkey. Where <laughs> gripping that hook, gripping the toes on that pole. Huh? <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get that out of my head now. Gotta, gotta get, get out of your head. head. Gotta get out of your head. Gotta get out of um, head. Yeah, with with motivation, I don't know. It's it's a. I think it's the word that has changed different definitions throughout my life. You know. Okay. Um, and what I mean by that is like when you know when I was younger and um, first started working out, like I try to find motivation to do things. Mm. You know, um, which I still kind of do one, every so often, but that would give me the only reason to do things, right? Once I get motivation, then I'll do it. And if we're talking about the context of, of working out, like, all right, once I feel like I want to work out, I will work out, mm-hmm. right? And then as, you know, as I continue to learn and, you know, I, I took the mindset from from Kobe is like, when you do things, when you don't want to do it, that's like the best way to really progress. So I, yeah. for me, I try to, I try to actively do things when I don't want to do it. Yeah. You know, and it, it doesn't really make sense um, just hearing that. But for mm-hmm. me, that's what motivates me is like, okay, I don't feel like doing this right now. And if we're talking about working out, I don't feel like working out. I'm just going to go work out because doing that, like it's almost fighting myself and that motivates me in a different type of way. Yeah. Right? So, so like that, that's, deeper, deeper than Kobe. Like, so for you internally, like, what is that, what does that do for you? Like, how do you, like, what is that, like, either like psychologically, emotionally, like, what does that do for you afterwards? I think under knowing that I've done something when I didn't want to do it, that helps me get momentum, right? So I think Mm. I'm more looking on how to create momentum okay, um, through, you know, those times where I'm not motivated. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's cool once in a while to, to find a way to get motivated, you know, whether you're watching a YouTube video, and, you know, workout motivation stuff, like mm-hmm. sometimes we need that, but that's, you know, few and far between when do you, it's very rare to feel motivated. I think everybody would uh, agree to that. And, you know, if it, yeah. if we do feel it, you know, keep that momentum, but there are times where you don't feel like doing things and what are you going to do there? You know, it doesn't yeah. have to be working out. It, what if it's something that, like, you know, that's important that you dread doing? You know, we have to find times and or ways and try to get strategies to. <laughs> no. Ah, not again. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting last <laughs> last day cool. Last day We get a little uh, lack of <laughs> We have to we have to create uh, strategies. There we go. To to get over those uh times because they will happen right we won't feel motivated we just have that's mm-hmm. that's that's the fact yeah. what are you going to do at that point yeah yeah so no, I... that's my my thought and, and approach there okay i will i will say i do like that i i think the concept of momentum is real um but i will say like as a caveat or like a i don't want to call it a pushback on that or like something to think about like 1000% you're not going to be motivated every day. Like just hard stop. Like shit's going to happen where you're not motivated. There's going to be a day where you're mm-hmm. tired. Whatever. Like you're, something's going to pop up. You have a bad day yeah. at work, whatever. But I think like if you're never motivated mm-hmm. and you talk about dread, like if every single day you're going into the gym, you dread it. If every, like if every single time you go into spin class, you're like, yeah, this is the, I don't want to do this. Like then something is up. I don't want right. to say something's wrong. Like it could be psychological. Right. And that's like outside of our scope, but like maybe it's time to change something. 
like change your schedule, try to like, what, what do you have control over that you could change? Right. Like maybe it's going from an hour workout to a 30 minute workout. Mm-hmm. Like maybe it's changing your program. Maybe it's changing your classes. Maybe it's trying to train with someone, you know, like, right. like, especially, you know, if you have more to- autonomy over your schedule or, or whatever it may be, like I get, if you have kids and like, you know, you're working two jobs, like 6am is your workout time and that's it. Mm-hmm. Like what, what do we have control over that we can change that at the very least can keep us going, can help us build momentum. Like you said, to yeah, keep us, yeah. keep us progressing in some way. Yeah, exactly. And you know, there's a lot of reasons why somebody's not motivated to go. And if it's like, if you are not motivated, even during whatever you're going to do, and I guess still with the context of working out, once you get mm-hmm. there and you're still not motivated, that's another conversation. Like maybe that's not the method of, of that's right for you right but if you get there now you feel good i think the the mm-hmm. your the problem there is like from the start to the or when you're not motivated to the start you just have to figure yeah. out what that is and yeah. maybe it's watching a video maybe it's um you know the whole movement is is um motivation like start doing things like for me Do, i yeah i start uh washing dishes you know it's it's just there I start doing it once my body starts going into that flow, creates rhythm. Then I'm yeah. actually my body and brain just uh, wants to create that moment or start that momentum, right? Yeah, do something to overcome that inertia. Yeah, because like that's, that's the first thing I learned when I started working remote is like it's hard to get up from the desk. <laughs> it's so easy to sit here all day. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. hard to break that. So for me, it became all right. I'm gonna work out in the morning. Mm. So I don't have to worry about anything else, like getting in the way of that. And like, yeah, there's mornings where I wake up and I'm like, I feel like shit and tired. But like, like you said, like if, yeah, I think you made a great point. Like if you get moving and you start to feel better, then like you're in a good spot. And it's just like, you know, how can we keep ourselves on track to do the things that we yeah. might not necessarily want to do or might not necessarily want to do in the moment. Right. Right. Yeah. But, like from the couch to the gym, that's, that's a downhill uphill battle right that's an uphill battles but if you can if you're on the couch and you want to get to the gym i would start to create like lists of like what do you like to do from mm-hmm. a movement perspective or what do you need to do do you need to go what um, you know do laundry or stuff around the house because once you start moving that'll yeah. that'll be a little bit easier to like like you said uh, break that inertia from there and now you just have to go to the gym so yeah, yeah. You, i would start with a place of what does motivate you or just what keeps you moving, right? Yeah. So yeah. anything anything else different you would add for motivating your clients? I think understanding what motivates them is, is one thing. And that's going to be different for everybody. That's going to be based off of, off of trust and then relationships. And um, I think if they're asking for motivation, that's that's kind of our job. Like, all right, right, let's we're here. Let's do it. Yeah. But if you get a text like I don't feel motivated to go, it's like, all right, what what do we what are we feeling? What how can I help you? Yeah. Right. And at some point you, there's a lot of things you can't do. So get some rest, see you again tomorrow. Whatever the context yeah. is, I think it's just a matter of understanding what motivates them and understanding what's not motivating them. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So like getting into their their personal likes or dislikes, like genuinely understanding this person. Yeah. Yeah, because that drill sergeant stuff is not, you know, come, you know, come or don't, you know, if you don't want a beard, no beard. Like, uh, I, I doubt people would respond well to that. There's some sickos out there, man. There's some sickos out there. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, they love that stuff, but I'm, yeah, we are not those people. It might work will... though. You know, it, it works for a short period of time, but it's not going to be mm-hmm. a lot. It's not a a place that can have longevity right within the the relationship of that client to working out like those are very short-term type of fixes yeah yeah that, that yeah. quick burn of fuel not yeah. lasting not sustainable i think i'm gonna take this last question rogue and go one more direction that mm. we did not talk about but i just thought about it uh and that's motivating someone to learn something new so like now in the space that we operate in, when we're teaching, basically designing learning 
or designing a learning environment for motivation, mm-hmm. right? And I think any more, a lot of the gaps, like we talk about gaps, like, is it a skill gap? Do they not have the coaching prowess? Is it a knowledge gap? Do they not know what to do? Is it an environmental gap? Do they not have the equipment they need to do the thing they need to do? Mm. Or is it a motivation gap? Like where they genuinely just don't want to do it. Mm. Um, and I think at times, like there is, a, there is a gap that is motivational, right? Where people, they have the knowledge, they have the skills, but maybe they don't want to do something and they don't want to learn something new because they're just not motivated to do so, right? So yeah. It, and it's, it's kind of like similar to like when you're talking with a client, like they're not motivated for behavior change. Like everyone knows they should eat healthier. Mm-hmm. Like everyone knows they should eat more vegetables. Yeah. Everyone knows they shouldn't eat out for every meal, but you know, is it a motivational gap? Is it a knowledge? Is probably not a knowledge gap. Is it a environmental gap? That's, that's kind of keeping them from doing that. So right. for a motivational gap in learning, I mean, we talk about building relationships all the time and for good reason, like, from what I found, building genuine relationships with people is the best way to overcome a motivational gap. Mm. Like when they see the like, all right, like this is a real person in front of me. Mm-hmm. They genuinely care. Okay, they want me to get better. Oh, yeah. all right, they're cool. All right, like I'll okay, okay, and then they can get into the content and start to see the value. Yeah, right. Yeah. But like banging people over the head with information like isn't even if it's in their language, even if they understand it, it still isn't super helpful. They have to know mm-hmm. that you care first yeah. before you start hitting them with science and shit. Right, right, right. Yeah, we don't have an information problem. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> no, we do not. We not, not at all. Yeah, people people can learn whatever they want to with, with just a just a click of a button, right? Yeah. And I don't I don't think they really need to. S- us to say, hey, get more sleep, um, <laughs> drink more water. Yeah. Like maybe yeah. you might have some reminders, but that's not what's gonna, um, you know, change that delta of not motivation or not being motivated to being motivated, right? Yeah, there's there's very in this space there's very few proprietary secrets. Mm-hmm. I, I know people act like it all the time, but like people are doing 90% of the same shit mm-hmm. for the most part. Nothing secret, really. I mean, I know right. there's some, there's a lot of fit tech companies doing like, you know, genetic testing and like whatever, and they have formulas and algorithms and all that stuff. But like the stuff that works, the fundamentals like are not secret are not proprietary. It's not an information problem. Mm-hmm. Like it's a, it's a motivation problem. So I guess, yeah, this does now span back from like, if you're working with another coach or if you're working with a client, an athlete, whoever, it's like, like take time to understand them. Right. Take time to let their relationship build. Right. And then they'll be bought. And then like take time for them to see like the results of, of one aspect of the training. And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden it's very easy to teach them new things. Yeah. Exactly. But it's, it's not just banging them over the head with it initially. Yeah. Trust, trust creates motivation, right? So that human to human connection is what's going to uh, be the the limiting factor here, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, there's all this AI technology, all this uh, technology that you can literally go get a workout from, you know, you can, there's a whole bunch of stuff on YouTube, mm-hmm. but why are people still fit, right? Why are people still obese in the, the U S and it's that human to human connection. How do we, um, give information to somebody in front of us that will uh, resonate with them and yeah. effectively create those uh, behavior changes. Yeah. No. 1000% bro. One. Yeah, that was good. To I some like degree, kind of sound like an old guy. These damn computers. <laughs> These kids and their damn computers <laughs> and their artificial intelligence. Back in my day, I used to have to walk uphill both ways to the gym. <laughs> what are you talking about bro that cowardly the dog that was kind of courage the cowardly courage, C- the cowardly courage? dog right there i don't know what that impression was i was trying to do an old guy but it was kind of courage that show used to scare the hell courage. out of me all right here, this, that was a scary this, show this, this scary bro scary terrifying show. man damn all right let's wrap it up um if you like this style of episode where well, we're pulling questions i mean one now that it's locked 
we're pulling questions every week, baby. At least one question from Instagram will be answered every single week. But if you like this full polling questions format, please let us know on Instagram at push and performance. Uh, no G at Gmail at push and performance at gmail.com. <laughs> Shoot us questions anytime. Uh, and it could be about anything. It could be about coaching. It could be about training. It could be about nutrition. It could be again, apparently not about JT's hair, but you can ask questions can, about can JT's ask, hair. That's you can ask JT's questions about JT's hair. About JT's dog. My dog. Yeah. Anything. We'll see him. We'll see him. He'll come out one day. Anything. Uh, but yes, let us know if you like this style of episodes where we pull in questions. But JT, where can people find you? On IG, coachjt.mp3. Mm. You can find me on IG at Nashville. Again, you can find the show at Push and Performance, no G. And as always, if you love the show, please show love how you're supposed to. Give us a five-star review, rate, subscribe, share it with a friend you want to help level up. Do all that good stuff for your boys. And uh, we will catch you all next time. Peace. Oh, my God.